my name is Mitchell Shields, and the purpose of my uh, talk right now is just to give you a few slides so that everybody is on the same page regarding what the commission is evaluating in this EIS, uh, what specifically is the project. So uh, what we're focusing on here tonight is primarily the Sable Trail project, um, which is being proposed by Sable Trail Transmission. There are two other projects that are separate but considered related that will be evaluated in the EIS, those being the Florida Southeast Connection Project and the Hillaby Expansion Project. This map shows um, the projects in relation to each other. The green uh, dashes there represent the Hillaby Expansion Project. The blue is the Florida Southeast uh, Connection Project. And the red is the Sable Trail Project. Um, I'll combine the, the the three projects will, will affect approximately 13,670 acres of land for the pipeline and above ground facility construction. They will utilize approximately 100 and a, to 110 feet of construction right away in uplands and 75 feet of construction right away in wetlands. After they're done, they would require approximately 4,320 acres of land to be maintained in permanent easement uh, for the operation of the pipeline and the above ground facilities. This is a map that shows the Hillaby expansion project. You can see there are uh, different dashes representing the different segments of pipeline that would be constructed adjacent to an existing uh, pipeline system in all of it in Alabama. There would be eight pipeline loops total, uh, ranging in diameter from 42 to 48 inches in diameter, uh, or 43.6 miles in total. There would be one new compressor station, three existing compressors that would be modified. And this can, these facilities would be phased over several years and would increase the natural co uh, gas capacity of the pipeline system by 1.1 billion cubic feet per day by 2021. The Florida Southeast Expansion Project is located in central Florida. It's going to involve, the, would involve the installation of approximately 126 miles of up to 36 inch diameter pipeline and have an initial capacity of approximately 600 million cubic feet per day. And so those two, <laughs> projects are also going to be evaluated in the EIS, but we're primarily here for the Sable Trail project today. Um, Sable Trail project includes uh, a main line that extends from near Alexander City in Alabama through Georgia all the way down into Central Florida to what would be a new Central Florida hub that would interconnect with two other pipeline systems. It would include a what's called the Citrus County Lateral, a small <coughs> pipeline that extends to the east in, in uh, excuse me, to the west in, in western Florida, and the Hunter's Creek Lateral, which is another small pipeline. There would be five new compressor stations associated with the Sable Trail Project. This slide provides some details on the phasing of the Sable Trail construction. In 2017, they would build approximately 460 miles of 36 inch diameter pipeline, that red line that I just showed you. There would be approximately 14 miles of 36 inch diameter pipeline associated with that Hunter's Creek line in Osceola and Orange counties, Florida, and 24 miles of 24 inch diameter pipeline in Marion and Citrus counties, Florida, that would be associated with the Citrus County line. They would also build three new compressor stations in 2017, those being one in Tallapoosa uh, County, Alabama, one in Su Suwannee, uh, and Osceola counties in Florida. In 2020, they would build two additional compressor stations, 
That would be one in Dorothy County, Georgia, and Marion County, Florida. And in 2021, they would construct additional compression at two of the stations, those being in Dorothy County and Suwannee County, Florida. The Sable Trail project would increase natural gas capacity to 1.1 billion cubic feet per day by 2021. Based on uh, comments received to date and the analysis we've done to date, we've identified some particular issues associated with this project that would be evaluated in the EIS. These include agricultural impacts, um, alternative routes are being evaluated, land use impacts uh, to residences, forestry as examples, uh, pipeline integrity and public safety are issues that have been raised. Certainly there's been issues with groundwater, surface water, and water quality. Fisheries, wildlife, and threatened endangered species. Karst features, <coughs> and cultural resources. These and other issues that are identified will be evaluated in the EIS. And now I believe I'll turn it back to Kevin for uh, your public comments. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we've got a bunch of people signed up to speak tonight, and after I get through the list of people who have signed up to speak, I will just kind of open it up to if someone has thought of something while they're sitting down and wants to come up. But I do want to honor the list of people who got here early and signed up. Um, so I kind of let you guys kind of just kind of talk without stating your name when I was walking around. So please do state your name since this is going into the public record. The court reporter is getting everything down to give you guys credit. So state and spell your name. Unless it's John Smith, please go ahead and spell that for us. Um, if you're representing a group, an affiliation, a local, local group, let us know who that is. Um, since we do have a bunch of people signed up, you know, please keep it to five minutes. Certainly, please don't do it longer than 10, just so we can get everyone in. I'd hate to be the last person on the list and um, you know, have to you know, be here super late. Um, and then please just be respectful of the other people while you're speaking. So the first person I have signed up to speak is uh, Mr. Doyle Weltsberger. My question is around. 